Whew. We're live. Jen just like ran in at the very last <laughs> second. Edmar <laughs> ran in morning. at the very last second. Uh, here we are, though. Let's what? see here. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to share about GTC? Before yeah, so G- GTC is coming up. Let me see if uh, uh, let me see if I could share my screen. But um, GTC is coming up in uh, be- begins March twentieth to twenty third. Totally free. Uh, at least ninety nine point nine percent of the content's free. There are some s- small workshops that are more one to one and require hardware. That's that's a small fee attached, but most of all, all GTC is free. Loads and loads of sessions. You can go to nvidia.com slash GTC. Uh, we have some selected kind of curated session lists. I'll post in the chat uh, so people can kind of look at some of the uh, sessions that are geared for creators or for developers, people looking to dive into Metaverse. A really cool session for 3D artists looking to um, to start to do side hustles. Uh, we have a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of action from different companies looking for uh, artists with experience to do uh, sim-ready assets. Um, so lots of cool content coming. Uh, and like I said, it's free. So you should just go to nvidia.com slash GTC, register. I'll post some links in a, in a few minutes. Um, and uh, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll probably be kind of listing all of the uh, sessions also on Discord. I already did about 30 of them on Discord. We'll do all the Omniverse related ones. So um, if you want to look really quickly at the list, you can just go to our Discord server, which is discord.gg slash NVIDIA Omniverse. And then um, upper, upper left is all the events. Um, uh, and you can just scroll down. You can see by date what's coming up. And um, you still have to register. That just let, get, let you look at all the things happen really easily. But you still have to register for each of the sessions. Um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. We also have one more thing happening. It's called Show Your Heart. It's our, uh, our latest community challenge. Uh, basically, if you can do anything uh, in Omniverse and any other DCC tool you're using, uh, with the kind of Valentine's theme, uh, it could be basically be anything. It could be anything red probably would work, but anything that looks cool kind of makes you think of Valentine's Day would be neat. Um, and post it on social media with the hashtag share your heart. That's H E A R T, obviously. And then uh, we will kind of promote those, uh, those, uh, uh, those posts uh, ourselves. Uh, and you could also submit to the Omniverse Gallery. We love sharing stuff and celebrating all the work that the great users out there are doing with the Omniverse platform. and all of uh, all the great other apps in the ecosystem. So yeah, those are the main things. I'm really excited for today. Uh, I can't believe how uh, how much excitement that this this <laughs> series is generating. We're going off the charts here. Eric has has single handedly put together a live stream that's generating a uh, live stream series that's generating thousands of views. So Eric, you have hit you hit something here. <laughs> if I had any idea what we did last week to get the views, I would uh, I would do it again. Unfortunately, I had no idea what we did different last week. <laughs> well, I, th- I think it's the magic you guys are doing with Excel. Um, I mean, a lot of people, Excel is a super popular tool for almost every uh, every worker out there. Everyone's familiar with yeah. Excel. So the fact that uh, you are showing how you can bring uh, a, a, such a, a commonly used powerful oh, tool no into the Omniverse platform uh, to great effect. I was really blown away by how bi-directional things are. Um, it's just, it's fascinating. So I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm excited for today, man. Thanks. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, uh, I'll share a link here. Let me see. Oh dear, let me be, let's see. I've actually published that source code to GitHub along with the Excel spreadsheet and a USD scene. Uh, now, keep in mind, I just published it. Uh, I'm going to have somebody, it's the idea is going to test that for us, make sure that I didn't leave too many hard-coded paths or do that sort of thing. But, but I'm going to go ahead and share the GitHub repo link. Uh, it's right here. It's public. It's available to you. Um, and there we go. If you're on YouTube or Twitch, you've got the link. If you're on uh, LinkedIn, unfortunately, you'll have to go to YouTube or Twitch for that link. Uh, but basically, you can go ahead and use that now. And just in the coming week or two, once I get that tested, I'll write a README file that explains how to use it. And we'll make sure that I don't have too too many hard-coded paths in there so it's easy to use. So, all right. Let's, but with that, let's get on with... Uh, Let's see, this week we're going back 
Let's see, back to the crank slider. We took it aside and worked on this Excel connector because I knew we could finish it, you know, pretty quick. Oh, and there's uh, the ideas right now, giving us a cheer. And yeah, they're gonna um, they're gonna test that. They're gonna do some testing and help us get that uh, dialed in. Let's see. Um, where was I? Nope, wrong place. Zia, thank you so much. You are you are one of our biggest fans. So great to see you on these streams. Always so helpful. Um, super helpful on Discord server too. Uh, answering people's questions and giving people great ideas. So thank you, man. You're a, a power member of the community. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, so we've just switched over to the official channels a few weeks ago. So for some of you, this might be, you, you're probably seeing this mechanism for the first time. So let me just start with a base, just a little overview. What we've done to start with is we went over to, where did we get this crank slider? I think we got it from GrabCAD. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure we got it from, Grab, from GrabCAD. We downloaded it, we brought it in, and we rigged it up with physics simulation inside of NVIDIA Omniverse. And one, and we've, uh, yeah, so here it is rigged up. And, uh, you know, let me know in the comments, I actually wouldn't mind backtracking and re redoing that rigging at some point. So if a few of you are interested in seeing us do that in a live stream, I'd be happy to go back and uh, kind of redo this mechanism for you. What if Can I'm you interested? That again? What's that? What if I'm interested? <laughs> well, Jeff, Jen, maybe we should. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we could, yeah, we can do that. Do you want to do that? I do, yeah, no, because the first time you did it, I kind of understood it somewhat, um, not 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 too well, because I'm not a an engineer myself. Even though I got a math major, and that was more in stochastics, not <laughs> not uh, computational. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I don't mind doing that. Let's uh, let's do it. That's good too, because we can give some credit where it's due to uh, the person who modeled this crank slider. So let's go file and let me see. How did I do this? I brought it in as a layer and I've actually learned better than that since then. So let's uh, let's see here. Let's create a new scene. Would you like to save the stage? No. All right. Brand new scene. Um, I always like to start by just creating a physics scene and uh, create physics, or a ground plane. And then, oh, you know what? This is a common thing. Omniverse, most media and entertainment, and, and I think also Unreal, prefer to have Y up. Um, whereas most engineering CAD softwares have Z up for the, in the coordinate system. <clears throat> what you can do you go to the world, go to add, and then, oh, stage, set up axis plus Z. And now it's all messed up. Let's delete the ground plane. The, let's take a look. Oh, and take a look. Our gravity direction is Y up. So we, I did things out of order. So let's go back. Now if we create that um, physics scene, Let's double check. See, now the Z axis is our gravity direction. And if we create that physics plane, we, and we could have just edited those by hand. It, yeah. It's also easy to bring them in again. There we go. So now we've got a good ground plane in a Z axis. Let's get a cat assembly. <clears throat> Let's see. For that, let's go to grab CAD. Oh. 
There we go. And if we go to the library. Oh, so tell me a little bit about GrabCAD. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, GrabCAD is a website where people share CAD models. And they uh, they import pretty easily? Uh, to Omniverse? Yeah. I guess it depends. Oh, yeah. Thing, oh, you know. yeah. Let me, maybe, we, we, let's talk about that. Because that's such a useful, like, me and potatoes Omniverse skill, right? And... I just I just gotta look at this. That's a cool looking one. That, is that, cool. that looks like a mini Baja buggy. Isn't that good? That's nice. And you can look at stuff in 3D. Just kind of let's uh, load in 3D viewer. It's kind of a fun looking buggy. Kind of fun to rig that up and drive it around in Omniverse, wouldn't it? I think uh, Tyner would be a big fan as well. Do I see a? We actually have the. Uh, um, Sierra Cars RX3 CAD data set that we that they're letting us share. So um, that's another, we've got some cool, uh, that's a really cool one because that's an actual race car. <laughs> it's like, it's fast. But yeah, uh, GrabCAD's got all these, whole bunch of CAD models. Uh, I would say just, you know, check it out when you download it because not all of them are the same level of quality. Some of them are pretty nice. Some of them are, um, a little more basic because anyone can upload. And uh, here we go. Great question. I love this question. Do the models need to be USD or can we work with other kinds? And I love that question because I love the answer, which is you can work with almost any 3D format in Omniverse. It's so flexible. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. But first, let's look for crank slider. There's probably a few here. Let's look for a good looking one. I wonder if I didn't. Uh, sometimes the Google gives me better results. Oops. I've actually been playing with Beam lately. With Let Beam. me ask you about that for a second. So, um, what is the downside when you bring in non USD uh, assets? Um, are you able to uh, convert them to USD with an Omniverse so that they work with the other DCCs or uh, or not? Yeah, so when you bring a CAD model into Omniverse, it converts it to a USD file. So then it's then you're good to go with the whole ecosystem. Yeah, the one caveat I would say is that once it's converted to USD, um, converting it back to the native CAD format is tough. Got you. Right. So, it's, yeah. So that's just be aware of that. I would say. Yeah, and it's uh, more than just CAD, right? Your FBXs, your BJs, you can have them, and then you can import them as a USD into Omniverse. Um, but you just need to keep in mind that maybe some of your materials might end up not, you know, uh, you know, staying on there, and they might get imported differently, and then you would have to make your own. Omni PBR material to get applied to it. So there, there is some downsides to not having it in USD. Uh, originally, when you're putting it in Omniverse, it's just that extra step of reapplying everything. Gotcha. Has anyone made an extension that can kind of troubleshoot uh, your file to tell you what, uh, what may have been lost or needs to be fixed? Hmm. It'd be cool to automate that, right? So you don't have to kind of... Uh... That would be cool. So here we go. Ahmed El Prince made this crank slider, and I, I like the look of it. Nice it's and good. clean. Yeah, it's nice and clean, right? Um, download files. Let's see what we can get here. Oh, just got them all for us. And uh, let's just um, I'm gonna extract that and see what's in there. Oops, wrong window. All right, here you can see we've got some, uh, well, there's a step file. We could bring that in directly. Or here's a uh, an assembly. This is like a, a SolidWorks assembly. 
So let's import let's import this just a native CAD file. I mean, steps would be should be really easy because that's a more of a neutral file format. But this is just a SolidWorks solid assembly, uh, no conversion done. It's just whatever they saved last when they were working in SolidWorks. Um, so we'll say here. First, I'm going to go to the extensions window and search for CAD. Oh, and we are in code. Let me launch create. File save. Viewport. Go ahead and save this scene before we go. <clears throat> We're going to save this as um, crank slider two. And creative today. Great. I'm going to close code. And we're going to launch create instead. So if you're on the release version of everything, it looks like, right? Yep. Cool. Yeah, I always use the production. So we have access to the pre release versions here, but I always use the release ones to make sure that whatever I'm doing works with whatever you're doing. Yes, that totally <laughs> makes sense. We, we did exception yesterday. We did a live stream with Blender, uh, just showing the, the rele latest release candidate because uh, we're showing new order to face stuff, but oh, cool. um, but it should, be the, should not change though in the release that's coming up in a few days. So I go to window and then extensions, go to NVIDIA, and if I search for um, CAD, here we go. What I've learned is that there's a CAD importer in the CAD converter. The CAD importer is the old one. You don't need it. Turn that off. The CAD converter, and this one is going to disappear at some point. It's, it's deprecated. The CAD converter is the greatest and latest. So check that on. And what you'll see now is when I go to File Import, look at this list of formats we can import. FBX, OBJ, GLTF, GLB, LXO, MD5, STL. That's a CAD format. Native TAV5 files, JT, NX, Parasolid, SolidWorks, STL, Inventor, TAV6, AutoCAD. I mean, take your pick. So if you're if you're working with CAD data, uh, yeah, you can pretty much just import it directly. And so, so let's go to solid works we don't have to even do that we can just say all files but um let's go to my downloads oh let's see here there it is and then we want to bring in the assembly because that's going to have all the parts in it oh shoot and i made a mistake it's okay. There it is. I'll just import it again once I've opened the right scene. Uh, now, just although, let me point out: if you do what if what I just did, it's going to convert those files to USD, and you're not going to know where they are. And it turns out that it just puts them right next to the originals. So it added this folder, converted assets, and you'll see right in here. There's a USD file with all the assets in it, right there. Okay. So it just sets it next to the CAD files. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, if I go to my scene and let's open up that scene we just made. Uh, did I save the stage? No. If we import it now, file import. <laughs> My downloads. Oh, they are right there. Downloads. If we import it now, it's going to place the converted file right next to our scene. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Yeah, looking good. Mm -hmm. 
And I've got a question from Captain Bratzett that I don't understand, so I'm going to highlight it. Um, is it possible to trigger the reimport with Action Graph? Uh, do you, so I'm not sure exactly what you mean there, like uh, on some kind of event trigger or on a loop or. Uh, so Action Graph, right? That's the visual scripting. Yeah. For for Omniverse. Um, I don't know if there's a specific node available, but you can um, you you can use like uh, like there's a node that you can use that that will allow you to um, write your own Python scripting in. So technically, yes. <laughs> um, but that's the way that I know right off the top of my head. I don't think there's like an actual node for it. I think there's, um, you would have to write your own Python scripting node, if that makes sense. Right. That makes sense. That does make sense. Let's see here. Oh, Eric gives a good tip. To find your file, you can also check the path and reference payload. Absolutely. So if you click on the prim right here um, and scroll down. So this one's a payload. And um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the reason you have payloads versus references, I can uncheck a payload and it will unload it. It still shows up in my tree, but it doesn't load in memory so it saves so if you have like a huge scene payloads are the way to go a reference i mean you could use payloads all the time and just always have them loaded i, I suppose but a reference is like a payload but there's no checkbox to choose not to load it <clears throat> and the reason i'm fiddling around right now actually yeah, there's no reason to do that okay so i've got my mechanism let's I see a good question from Zia. Oh. Do we need to do Z up again, or is that retained in the file format? That's saved in the file when you save the scene. So you only have to do it at one point, at, to hopefully at the beginning, or else you've got to fix a lot of stuff. <laughs> and, and honestly, it's pretty smart. It, when each of these USD files, it keeps track of whether the Z is up or Y is up. And if you have a Z up scene and you bring up a Y up asset, it will put it into a transform and make it Z up for you. Mm -hmm. it, so it it tries to kind of help you out there. So it it's really not the end of the world if you're Y up. I just am, I don't know. It, it bothers me, okay? <laughs> um, uh, okay. So we've got the whole thing in our scene. It's looking good. Um, okay, great. We've got all these parts. Let's see if we can start to rig this up. <clears throat> so the first thing we're, we're going to do, uh, we have a physics scene. Great. Let's just create our first joint, all right? And what I'll do... Uh, let's go here. Let's just start with the base and this crank and this, maybe this pin right here. Yeah. So I'm going to hide everything else. There's the base. There's the shaft. Just going to hide the rest of the mechanism. So it's a little easier to see what we're doing. There we go. Slow that down a bit. Slow it a little bit more. Getting my camera toned in. There we go. Great. So we've got those two parts. And the first thing we're going to do. Oh. We're going to add rigid bodies and colliders to these. So we'll, we'll click on the base and we'll say add. Physics, rigid body with colliders. 
go to the shaft, right click, add, physics, rigid body with colliders. Now when we run, it's going to fall down. It's now in the physics simulation. And you know what I want to do here? I'm just curious. Um, okay, 159.95. If we run it, oh, we're not getting back because we're using them. Um, so notice that these positions aren't changing. I'm just going to slide this down to the ground, just set it on the ground. Um, one thing I haven't figured out yet, and maybe so, you know, maybe someone out there knows the trick. So what I want to do is let's actually select all of them, cr uh, create physics, um, or add physics, excuse me. Add physics rigid body with colliders preset. Now, if we make those all visible and run it, they're all going to fall in a jumble. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. And what I'd like to do is if I do this one, these, right? And if I. Put those all into kinematic mode. They won't move anymore. Only the base is going to go. Kinematic mode just kind of freezes them so that they don't mo move with the physics anymore. Mm -hmm. So what I want to know, what I want to do is when this runs, I want it to, when I stop, I want it to stay down there. And, and so it kind of like, stays in his position but that wouldn't work either i you know what i think i'm going to do today is let's let's grab this if you notice um i, I just want to put this thing on the ground so it's not floating and I, i'm trying to figure out right now how far down do i move it so it's right on the ground um but if you look usually notice the translations don't update during the simulation the reason it doesn't do that is because, let me see, physics, um, simulation info overlay. You notice that we're using fabric, and you, we want to use fabric. It improves our performance. But if you're using fabric, those positions won't update during your simulation. So what we can do is we can go to window, um, simulation, and settings. Oh, no, not that one. That's physics settings right there. We go to window, file, where is it, where is it? Edit preferences, there we go. Then if we go to uh, physics flat cache, which is the old name for, um, for fabric, we can just disable it. And now when we simulate our positions uh, update. Where should we get in here? Oh dear! Did it just fall? Oh, no! It's uh, there's this gra it's a graphics thing where sometimes things disappear after you do that change. Hmm. Well, okay, I'm on the base. Oh, uh, what? Why isn't it changing? You're a magician. Oh, the <laughs> why? Oh, see, okay, it did it. That's the thing. This whole thing is Y up. Look at this. There's this 98.7 translation in the Y. And um, if you notice, one of these, there it is. A one, one, one. No. Aha. This is a Y up assembly. And so it flipped it for us. And so if, if when I look at this base moving, it's at 98.703 in the Y. And it's Y transform is moving. It's moving in its own Y direction. Well, that tells me, though, these are all, well, they're not. 
But what that tells me, let's see, 98.703. My guess is if I take this, oh, it's 9.2. Here we go. 98.703. Hmm. I'm going to reopen this scene. Let me save it. Where did you go? Hit F, it'll take you to it. Oh, I put it under the ground. Oh, dear. Struggling today. Maybe negative nine point eight. Oh, maybe there's a scale. I'm just gonna move it and see. Yeah, because if uh, if you look, there was the the matrix that oh. it had was point one, right? Oh, okay. So when you translate that from the parent, you you want to do ten less, right? Yeah. So where was that anyway? Uh, 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 I think it was in geometry that I saw it in. Yeah, right there. Oh, there it is. It's scaled by 0.1. Sure enough. There you go. And this was 98.703. I'll do 9.87. I think and call it good. And if we run it now, oh, where's that going? I'm struggling here to make this look. You need to have it just a little bit above, so that way when it. Um, oh, it's trying to push it out because all these pins and things overlap. It's trying to separate them from each other. Okay. So it's angry with us. If we took these all out of kinematic mode, that's going to help with that particular one. So now they're gonna they're gonna move. Okay. So now if we go to this, I bet I bet we can go to nine point eight. See if it if it likes it's a little better now. Yeah. It's kind of fun to watch that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So when it's in um, kinetic mode, it was basically f uh, like the base was trying to move down, but all the other pieces were like, no, 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 I don't want to move. So it was kind of like forcing, forcing it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So the kinematic mode means yeah, it makes keeps it prevents them from moving at all, and so but their meshes were overlapping with the base, which can move. And that poor mesh, that poor base was overlapping with all of those parts and with the ground. And so it had it overlap with something or shoot off into thin air. That could have happened too. But in our case, it decided, we'll just put you below the ground plane. Mm. That was the closest it could get it to uh, resolving all those unresolvable contact um, contacts. But if you want to know, like for a mechanism... I think we'll actually use kinematic mode for this base to say, we just don't want the base to move at all. And it's really handy when you're debugging a mechanism because if you've got stuff flying around and moving everywhere, you can pick one thing and say, you don't move. <laughs> no matter, and it won't. And then you can kind of have a starting point to debug with. Mm -hmm. So let's actually do that with the base. We're going to put it in kinematic mode or kinematic enabled. So now... Oh dear, the base won't move on us. Let's hide um, this stuff. So we've just got this shaft. And let's turn the shaft on. So it's not, oh, I think it is. So it's just going to pop up in the air out of that. Because these two are overlapping right now, it's like, I just got to get out of there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> and 
And there are two ways we can handle this situation because we don't want it to do that. Uh, one way is we can go into these meshes and really get those meshes nailed down so that that hole is smooth and is there and that, that shaft is smooth and it fits in the hole. Um, that's a lot of work. Let's do it the easy way. All right. And that is we're going to go into our create physics and we're going to make a collision group. And the filter groups it is saying, okay, what a collision groups does is it says, we want these colliders to ignore each other or not ignore each other with respect to collisions. And so we can tell objects kind of selectively what they want them to collide with. And so this group is just going to make a group of prims. So let's say this includes, uh, let's do everything in the, in the crank slider mechanism because we don't want them to collide with each other at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and add them. So we've grouped all of those colliders. And that just creates the group. And now what we can say is, which colliders do we want to filter so that these ones don't collide with them? And we just say, well, ourself. This it's we want we don't want to collide with ourselves, right? So if we add that now and run it, our our shaft will happily sit there, even though it's overlapping with the base. We've just filtered the collisions. Hmm. Cool, right? Oh, before we forget, let's turn fabric back on. Mm -hmm. Edit preferences. Oh, dear. I closed it. There we go. Turn back. There we go. Fabric's back on. And, yep, still running. Great. <clears throat> so now let's add the next piece. Where to go? Oh, what's happening now is this is falling uh, in onto the ground because it falls right through the base onto the ground. Um, let's see here. So there are two ways we can do this. Next, we want to rigidly attach this crank to this pin, and there are two ways we can do that. One is if we bring in the parts individually, we can put them into the same rigid body. So we put them under a transform. We put the rigid body in the transform above, and we use these just for collision meshes. And uh, that will make them move together. Let's try a rigid, uh, let's try a rigid joint today, though. <clears throat> I haven't really used those much, so but I think they seem handy. So I'm going to select these two and go right click and create physics joint, um, fixed joint. Does it matter which order you select them? Yeah, because it's going to put it in the tree underneath the second one. And okay. there was something else. <clears throat> and it will place the origin at the origin of the second one. So if you, if you select this crank slider, the fixed joint is right here. If you select the shaft, its origin is there. So it creates the joint's origin uh, at this second one. And it puts it under the second one. I like to go ahead and create a scope here. And actually, ooh, I should talk to Tyner first. Um, well, let's go ahead and do it. Take this part with a grain of salt. I'm learning how to do this myself. Um, from talking to Tyner... We should probably done this first. I'm going to delete this here. I go layer. Let's add a new layer here. Insert, create sublayer. And we're going to call this um, joints. Root layer is not empty. No. I don't want to transfer all the root layer stuff in there. So now I'm going to set this as the authoring layer, the joints layer. And when I create my joints, I'm going to create them in that layer. And this, 
I got to I just got to spend some more time watching Dave Tyner's videos because he's the pro at this. But from talking to him, he this is kind of how he organizes his tree. Is he kind of by he'll put layers in by function. So he'll have like a camera sublayer and a joint sublayer and a material sublayer that sort of thing. <clears throat> and uh, um, I'm new to this part of the art, so I'm learning and trying. Hmm. But let's so that's so that's now my edit layer. So if I create a joint between the uh, shaft and the crank, and if I right click create physics joint, fixed joint, and then it puts it into this sublayer for me. And then I want to come here and say create scope rename that to joints. And I'm going to bring this right there. And then when I name joints, I like to call it like a crank underscore shaft I name it by the two objects I'm connecting, connected by an underscore. And you don't need to say what type of joint it is because it's right here under type. It's a fixed joint. So now let's run it again. There you go. Those two things are now rigidly attached. So Zia Ideas asks, I'm curious uh, what the scope layer node does. Just acts kind of like a folder. Let's you organize your scene. All right. Cool. Let's see. Let's go back. So now we've got let's make a let's make a joint in between the base and the shaft, a revolute, so we can get that thing to spin. Okay. And this, okay, this is where Jen asked before, is it important the order? Totally. Because if we create the Revolute joint, let's do it both ways, and I'll, let's just show you what happens, okay? I'm going to select the base second, which is wrong in this, in this specific case. Well, I think so. Mm -hmm. Create a physics joint Revolute. Oh, it's going to be weird. It's all weird right now. That's because... Well, it's still created over there. I'll create it under the shaft. Shows you what I know. This is kind of funny. I thought it would... Uh, whichever one you select second. Create physics joint revolute joint. There we go. I, I must have changed my selection. So it's going to make this Revolute joint over here at the origin of the base. Now notice that green circle. That's the direction it's trying to ro rotate about, which is wrong. Um, let's change that to uh, somewhere. Here we go. The axis is the x-axis. Change that to the y-axis. And you'll notice, oh, it's all garbage. Oh, my. <laughs> Because it's trying to rotate all this stuff around this axis over here. It's all, it's trash. Delete that joint. We don't like it. Oh, my. Okay. It's just trying to rotate it around. And, it's pro and, and we haven't fixed our masses yet, so the masses are probably crazy. Um, so let's go this order here. So base and then shaft. Create. Physics joint, uh, revolute joint. We're going to make it that y axis, our axis, and let's see what happens. Oh, a little, a little tilt here. That's interesting. But you can see by the, what I'm doing here, by the way, if you hold shift and click on something, you can pull and apply a force to the scene. What if it's kinematic? 
Can you still apply a force? No, because it's kinematic. So it's okay. So if I take this base, and if I turn on off kinematic enabled, oh, I've got to wait a minute. What am I doing? Oh dear. Let's delete that change. I still have my joints as the edit layer. Let's let's change the root world back to edit layer to, to change that. So I'll go to my base. Turn off kinematic mode. But I can do this now. Oh, okay. Okay, but we're getting this thing. Do you see that slump there? Yeah. That's not good. Let's figure out what's up. Uh, first, let me change my layer back to my joint. And then we're going to move this joint to the joints. Rename it to uh, base underscore crank. Actually, it's shaft. Let's figure out why it's slumping. I think the first thing you can do to increase your accuracy of mechanisms. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Shout out. Hey, Vincent. How's it going? Yeah. So he's referring to this great video series that Adam yeah. put together, the physics team. Literally 22 videos uh, going over um, all the main topics of physics. Uh, anyone who hangs out in the physics channel discord will recognize Adam very quickly because he's uh, always in there helping people. So that's going to, uh, we actually gave a sneak peek of that series to some users on discord um, and nothing but rave reviews. So it'll be official next week on our YouTube and NVIDIA on demand channels. It looks like, so that's exciting. That's cool. Yeah. I'll be watching them. <laughs> I could use the help. They're really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, if you select on the prim above your mechanism, is that right? Or maybe it's here. Oh, no, no, right here. We can right click, add physics articulation root. And that changes the way that this mechanism solves to a more accurate way. So if you use Isaac Sim, there'll be, I think there are articulation routes by default, but that's what, this is more of like the engineering style of uh, collisions or of uh, um, mechanisms. So they're very accurate. Um, you just have, there are a few gotchas when you actually um, create a closed loop of joints. We'll deal with later, but that increases your accuracy and as you can see, uh, goodbye slump. So we've got a, a more accurate solver now. That um, So if you're doing more like a video game or you don't need the accuracy, then you can do a lot more joints with without the articulation root. But if you're going for that accuracy, you want to use the articulation root. But here we go. We can still drag that around. We can pull on this. Got some friction going on or something. Oh, for sure we do, because look, otherwise this would slide forever. So, so what's going on here is that uh, this pin has got some friction between it and the ground, so it's slowing it down. Uh, come on. Pull. Pull. That's a lot of friction. Yeah, that is a lot of friction. Let's take a look at that. This is why I add a physics scene. And oh, we have no idea what the default properties are for this scene. So we haven't applied physics materials to these things. And so they've got some default set of properties. Let's switch back to the root layer here. And we'll go to um, create physics. Um, wait, create material. No, create physics, physics material, rigid body material. And then what we'll do here, so we now we have a, our default physics material. The friction is zero. The restitution is zero. So 
The stuff will not bounce at all and will have no friction. Let's just see if it makes a difference. And if we go to the physics scene, we can set the default physics material to that physics material we just made. Oh, I like this one. The material from Thor's hammer. <laughs> right? It seems like it. So now if we pull that, no, it's <laughs> goodbye. And oh dear. If we run it again and pull on this, it's just going to spin and spin because there's no friction. It's kind of cool that you can see this wobbling just from the inertia from that from that crank, right? Interesting. Yeah, let's keep going forever. I guess that's one, one way to do a one-hour live stream, right? It's just put zero, friction to zero, move something, and say, let's find out when this thing stops. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to wait for it. I don't know what else to say. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so how do you how do you fix that from from moving? Oh, so the base. I'm just going to go into the base and put it back into kinematic mode. Okay, and that shouldn't screw with the. Yeah. Also, we just said the default material. So another thing we could do is we could just add a material with friction to just the base, and then it would and to adjust the ground plane, and then they would stick to each other, and everything else would be frictionless, right? Um, but for me, I kind of want things to be frictionless for now. Oh, is that? No, it seems okay. So that this will spin really good. I could watch that all day. It's they kind of some pinwheels. We need to get all the other stuff in there, and it's, it's going. Okay. Uh, Zia asked a great question. Oh, couple of great questions. One, can we change the masses of the prims? Something less than Thor's hammer. You absolutely <laughs> can. And uh, is there a setting for static versus kinetic friction? Yeah. So if we look at this at the physics material, here's your dynamic friction and your static friction setting. That's an easy one. As far as setting, setting the mass goes, let's go ahead and apply a mass to the base plate. Um, if we go click on the base plate, we can right click to any rigid body. We can right click, um, add physics mass. And it will, it'll give it some mass properties. And we'll probably want to do that because it's just auto calculating some mass for each of these parts. We don't know what that mass is. And so if you're having a really jittery, trashy mechanism, it's just not working very well. One of the first steps is just to go in and set a similar mass to all the objects, even if it's not accurate, having kind of like a, just set the mass to everything one, something like that. And that, that will fix your jitters. And you can go back later and really tweak those masses and, and get them right if you need to. But if you're just trying to fix jitters, setting everything to a mass of one is a great start. <clears throat> all right, are we in our, we're in our world. Let's go back to joints. And um, actually, these guys, I'm curious. If I just, you can drag deltas. So you've got all these deltas in my joints. I'm just going to put those in there and see what happens. Oh, nothing good. Oh, dear. Oh, the joints are inside the world. I'm going to bring these changes. Yeah. Let's see what happens. There we go. I just only want my joint changes in here. And so if you have deltas, so like if you accidentally have the wrong layer as the authoring layer and you make some changes, don't worry. You can grab those deltas and drag them into the right layer. Fix that for you. Um, I mean, of course, it's better if you remember to change your, your edit layer as you go. But alrighty, Let's do this pin. Actually, I'm just going to leave that hidden for today. That will make it visible, but it doesn't actually need to be have a joint. Okay, we will incorporate that one later. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay, so this is where 
Let's grab these pins, that pin, and this. These are the pins at the ends. I'm making these visible because you see how this origin is right where we want those. We're going to want those Revolut joints right there. So what I'm going to, we're going to want to build some joints on those. So I'm going to take this link, this big link in the middle with these pins. Can I make a, I wonder if I can create a rigid joint with three things. I don't even know. You cannot. So we're going to start with this pin and um, this link. We're going to create a joint. Create a physics joint fixed. And put that where it belongs. Where did I put it? Oh, reorganized for me. And then um, so we got this pin to the link. We'll grab these two. Great. Physics joint fixed. Pop it in there. Those now stick together. Uh, we're going to take this one. Oh, this is the... I don't know why he called it slider. That's not a bit of a mis, misname there, I would say. Where's my stuff here? Physics. Put that into kinematic mode so it doesn't move. No, notice we're getting some jitters on that. Well, that's probably a mass problem. All right. <clears throat> we're almost out of time, so we're just going to do this last joint, and then we'll wrap it up. But here's the pin that we want, and uh, here's this the crank. Okay, so we'll go between the crank and the pin. We're going to create a joint. Uh, Revolute. Put that in the right. Oh dear. Put that where we want it. Give it the Y. Oh. Okay, so here we've got some masses. Uh, okay, one minute. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. Gonna grab them all. This is what I talked about. We're gonna do um, add physics mass to all of them. We're gonna scroll down to, there's the mass. Make it one, like I said, just to get them all similar. Oh, that's still not fixed. Still have 30 seconds. Shoot, I hate <laughs> it when I end a live stream on a bad note. What happens if I move this? Oh. I mean, it works. Yeah, we're just getting some kind of a... <laughs> well, so the mass, let's just try, uh, maybe the mass is really heavy for the size. So let's select all those masses and give them a smaller mass. Let's make it like 0 0.1. Yeah, I've never done these rigid joints before. I think what I would do next because see how this is slumping on the pin and this is slumping on there? These fixed joints, I think it's, you're just better off making them, putting them together in kind of reorganizing your trees so that they're in the same rigid body. Uh huh. So is there then a they, joint? Then they can't move. And is you don't have joint? to debug it. What's that? Is there a joint between the pin on the crank and the... The, the, yeah, the pin and the crank to the link. Is there a joint between those two? Yeah. So between this crank and, oh, is it between that and the, I mean, let's look at the, let's look at it here. Mm 
Um, yeah, it's between the crank and the pin. So. Okay, but there's there's no joint between that pin and the link. Uh, there is. It's a fixed joint. Okay. And the fixed joints. I've got I've got to look into it and, and ask why is my fixed joint not fixed, right? Yeah, is it? It could joints in Omniverse conflict. Totally, absolutely, okay. and they can conf conflict with the masses. So if you've got really high and different masses, or if like the center of mass of this is off somewhere then um, it'll mess everything up. And we, we can debug more of that in our next live session. Um, well, I think we'll reorganize this tree to be more like a, to keep those as, as in the same rigid body. Mm -hmm. And we'll also show you how to use the physics debugger to get to the root of some of these. Because of the mass of that link could be like 10 feet away. And that would, that would cause all kinds of problems mm. too, right? Um, but we're out of time for today. I've got to wrap it up. Uh, we'll continue this next week. Um, I'll reach out to ask about these fixed joints a little bit, but my hunch is that you're better off just putting them into one rigid body so it's not even a joint. And then there's nothing for the solver to even solve, right? It, it just, I think, makes sense. Hmm. So, um, so until next time, uh, dream of crank slider mechanisms, I guess. Okay. I think this could be a good ASMR uh, video as well. Maybe we add some sounds to this. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Lull people to sleep with uh, some Omniverse ASMR. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for thanks for the great comments in the chat. Thanks for Eric, Zia, Captain, Renan. And I will work on something. I'll, I'll try to come up with something creative. I don't want to uh, intimidate the other creators here, so I got to be careful. Um, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, <laughs> I would embarrass myself, but I'll see if I come up with something. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody. Really great stream. Looking forward to the next one. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>